I strongly believe that there's art in every single person. This is what makes me happy, so I'd probably do this until the wheels fall off. Hello, nurse! Well, I'm not a nurse, even if I am preparing you to see the doctor. However, there are a couple patients, or should I say victims, ahead of you. Oh, darn. Sorry. It begins when some doctors suddenly end up suffering from a severe case of death, and the only connection between them is that they all worked on a tragic case of the wife of doctor and organist Anton Five, whom records state died in a fiery car crash en route to see his dying wife. Aww. Soon it seems that Five has returned from the dead and is wiping out the offending doctors by utilizing the plagues visited upon the pharaohs in the Bible. Uh, what if he'd had a different book than the Bible? I mean, if he had Tom Sawyer, would he kill him by having him whitewash a fence until they collapsed? Or if he had Snow White, would he have moved in with seven of them? Or, or if he had that old mystery story, Ten Little Indians, where people are killed off one by one, would he end up killing them off one by... No, wait, that is what he's doing. Ah, <clears throat> oh, shut up, will you? The police fight to protect the physician from the fear-flushing five who puts on an unhappy face and teams with his sexy silent assistant to seek revenge against some big-name actors and others when their prescriptions run out from the abominable Dr. Five. Hello, Ness! No, he's a doctor. And, you know, he changed the pronunciation of his last name, Five. It was originally Fibs, but when he was known as Dr. Fibs, his patients didn't believe him. <laughs> you see, <laughs> you could hear him. You need hip surgery. And they say, you're lying. You just want me to have unnecessary surgery. Honest, I'm not fibbing. I mean, fibbing. <laughs> Here comes the abominable wolf, Dr. Five. No relation to the snowman. Hey, watch. Whoa, call Vincent Price Donald Trump, because that dude just got fired. Actually, they should try that on your face. Why? Because yours doesn't look so hot. Tombstone, just cut it out. Why don't you read something? Yeah. Okay. Doctor's waiting room. Not the words on the screen. Why don't you read a, a magazine? Oh, I read all these magazines the last time I was here. In 1999. See, magazines in the doctor's office are always real old. Don't explain the joke. I'm not sure what they mean, though, by title abominable. Oh, that's easy. You ever heard of a hand grenade in a steamer? That's abominable. <laughs> Boy, I hope I don't have to wait a long time and then go into the hospital. Last time I was in there, I asked for lunch. They brought me, uh, let's see, there was the, uh, a teaspoon of bouillon, a thimble full of weak tea, and a protein bread for about a quarter inch square. They asked if there was anything else they could do for me, and I said, yeah, give me a postage stamp. Huh? I'd like to read a little. Why don't you read one of these magazines? Uh, we already did that joke. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry. Now, what was that rumor I heard about you and Dr. Five? Did he once take out your tonsils? No. Did he ever take out your appendix? No. Did you ever have a girlfriend named Melina? Uh, yeah. That's it. I knew he was taking out something of yours. <laughs> Nurse. <laughs> Good thing this ain't an HMO. HMO? Oh, the movie's over. Back Vincent Price and the abominable Dr. Fives, and isn't it odd, with our couch potato culture and lack of our exercise today, some people don't even know how to hold a bat? Look! It's a, it's a new thing on the market. It, it keeps out drafts. Oh, come on. He's too old to get drafted. Oh, yeah. I don't get that. You're too young to get that joke. Back to the abominable Dr. Fives. Roll the movie. <clears throat> I said, roll the movie. Oh, what's the problem? Can you tell me anything else about it? No, I don't think so. Oh, come on. I'm sure you could tell something else. That guy's a chicken, I tell you. A giant chicken. Uh, give me change, please. This 1971 film marked a change for Vincent Price. This was the first film where he systematically wiped out his revenge victims using a known pattern. For example, in our old favorite, Theater of Blood, 
Vinny killed each victim according to a Shakespeare play. Oh, I hate it when that happens. No. <laughs> this campy Dr. Fibes film boasts a couple big stars. The respected actor Joseph Cotton was a co-worker of Orson Welles and appeared in Citizen Kane. And gap-toothed mustachioed Terry Thomas was a famous comic actor in both British and American TV shows and movies. Oh, uh, yeah. And Inspector Trout, Peter Jeffrey, had a career of over 35 years in British cinema and TV, and even played opposite Tom Baker in Doctor Who. Who, what, where, 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 where'd he go? You do that every go? time where? I mention that. Who? Dr. Five's assistant, Volnavia, Virginia Knopf, was among the Bond girls in the 007 film On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and the voice imitating Al Jolson singing Dark Town Strutter's Ball? Yes, the night at the Dark Town Strutter's Ball. That was a famous cartoon voiceover expert that we've mentioned before, Paul Freese. Uh, could you sing a little more for us, Paul? Huh? Uh, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Sorry about <laughs> that. Oh, union guy. Let's return to the abominable Dr. Fives, but first, the fisherman's report. What's currently running in the rivers and lakes? Trout. Okay. There's a rumor that always comes up that Vincent Price wore several layers of plastic makeup over his mouth so that his lips wouldn't move when he spoke his lines, but that appears to be just a rumor, and his lines were pre-recorded. He just did throat movement to coincide with the words. Oh, of course, Captain. I guess it ain't all right. It's Otherwise, it would have sounded like that. And one other trivia note, Five's deceased wife in this film is played uncredited by popular British pin-up and actress Carolyn Munro, who appeared in many horror and fantasy movies. <laughs> yeah. It's not your fantasy. What is los with das Doctor? Oh, let's return to the abominable Dr. Fives, and we got a report that impeached Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich's unannounced visit to the state senate chambers last week got a very cold reception. It brought the internal temperature down to at least 100 degrees below zero. And now you'll sit on the tarmac for three hours, waiting to take off. Well, stupid, what are we waiting for? They never tell you. Tonight's movie is brought to you by the healthy drink, Dr. Fiber. <laughs> yes, the refreshing break that's just what the doctor ordered. The secret of Dr. Fiber is fiber. Essential for good health, we choose only the finest organic ingredients to brew up Dr. Fiber. And we then filter it for added protein. Yeah! Ooh. And for maximum freshness, we flash freeze our filtration vessels. So, when you have a burning thirst, I got fiber. How much would you order? 37 cases. Back to the abominable Dr. Fives, and look, up in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Can you see what it is? Well, if he had malpractice insurance, he could increase his average to one a day. One a day? What, is he prescribing vitamins now? The prescription is dangerous from him anyway. I see you plug your blue tooth behind your collar when you drain his veins. It's odd how you swallow, use a book of God to fabricate a way to make them die, make them die, make them die. Make them die. They detect your crime And this babe's a mine Even in your bed You're not fine Because when five arrives He will bring the fire and you won't survive Not by buying higher thanks to X will remind you, get the dock, get the dock, get the dock. Now the sun distracts Dad while the assailant plays with cursed flame. And his organ transplant does it broke his heart to lose his little woman. So he chilled and refilled and he killed. And you change your clothes and you pick your nose while you walk your dog broke that frog because
Because if I align, you will now expire when he takes a drive. Vengeance will inspire Mr. Freeze. Disease Fives is now behind you. Let him flock. Let it flock. Goodbye, Doc. As nine out of ten doctors agree, they won't survive if the tenth doctor is Dr. Fives. Take two of these and call them in the morning. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mrs. Fives. <laughs> Let's get back to the abominable Dr. Fives, and we have a clip of a warning issued to nurses at a local hospital. Victoria. He will soon reveal the secret, Victoria. Victoria's secret! With the see-through wood. <laughs> Never mind. My gosh. Here's something really cool I wanted to show you. Our friend, longtime fan Dave Fuentes, went out to the Horror Hound convention where they had a big collection of horror hosts who came out there. And he took some pictures with some of them, including fellow Rondo Award winners like Count Gore Duvall, who was this year's winner as favorite horror host. And also from New England area, Penny Dreadful, who was a winner uh, in a previous year as well. And both of them were nice enough to send the autograph pictures to me here. And it's nice to know that all his horror hosts hang together. And he even took a picture with our dear friend Elvira. And he said that she had a big smile on her face when she talked about how much fun it was to work with me. And I think you might have seen it on a previous show when we showed the picture that she had sent to me. And uh, tell me, Kerwin. Kerwin. What do you think of Elvira? I'm wondering if she needs an assistance, and we're back to the Victoria's Secret! <laughs> back to the that. abominable Dr. Fives, and even with the delay, do you think we TV stations have done enough to ready the public for the digital TV conversion? We're doing everything we can, sir. Dude, Fives is starting the acid trip! Oh, wow, man, yeah. <laughs> Next week on Sven Gooley. The attack of the Zone Trooper. You see that? World War II soldiers caught behind enemy lines find alien invaders. I'm dead sure this is a rocket ship from outer space. Plus, Coffee Coffin counts down the top five favorite Sven songs. Next week on Sven Gooley. Now, the chilling conclusion of the abominable Dr. Fox in Volnavia. Would you please put the bib on our big boy there so we can eat his St. Peas? Uh, no. You're getting the bib too high. Ooh, that laugh. Would that mean Fibes is still alive? Let's hear that laugh again. <laughs> Gonna peck his way right out of that coffin. And speaking of still around, incidentally, next week, you can bet. That's... <laughs> I'll be laughing all the way to the door. <laughs> bah, ha, ha. Let me just see. Oh, my Friend, God. I don't know about these doctors. Well, I went to see my doctor and told him I hadn't been feeling well at all. Oh. He examined me, left the room, and came back with four bottles of pills. What? He says to me, when you wake up, take this green pill with a big glass of water. Hmm. After lunch, take this yellow pill with a big glass of water. Water. After dinner, take this blue pill with a big glass of water. Then, before you go to bed, take this red pill with two big glasses of water. Ow! I was scared of all these pills, so I asked, Doc, what exactly is wrong with me? And he said, you're not drinking enough water. <laughs> oh, Jackass! And after you've drunk the water, suddenly like nature takes its course. <laughs> Doesn't make the joke any better, does Good night, it? Good night, everybody! Yes. Even these chickens are waterlogged. <laughs> Who's been logging the chickens with water? Anyway, as we present the chilling best. That makes a difference. Now I look like I know what I'm doing. We now offer phone service for $1.70 a month with a uh, hat. But this is the face behind the voice. And this is my hand.